Here we are on the Columbia. We're about two miles up from Kathlamet, Washington in the lower Columbia, and we're looking at alternatives for commercial fishermen that will be good for fish and good for fishermen. It's the first pound net to be permitted in roughly 90 years. This is a historical event. Where my grandfather's top fish trap was located is basically where we're sitting at right now. Well, what my grandfather did in uh, 1910, he came up from Chinook and he put his first trap just down below the point right below us here now. And then as it uh, worked out, he put in four more below it. So he had five traps lined up just below us is where we're at now. But in 19, I want to say 33 to 34, all the traps in the Columbia River in the state of Washington are outlawed. The trap's downfall was its efficiency. When they outlawed the traps, it wasn't because they didn't work. This is the only one operating on an experimental research basis on the Columbia River, is, is this right now. If you can see the lead in the background, these fish come up and then they will enter into your big heart. And then you can see where it narrows down, which we'd like to call the small heart and then it will enter into your spiller. Good to go. And that's where the fish, they're not harmed. They've made no contact with anything. They've been untouched. And then we basically uh, move them into the recovery box right there. And that's what you can see, which species is which as far as the monitoring. Steelhead. There's a bee right there. There is no question that um, today, we're losing way too many fish to a mixed stock fishery. And what I mean by that is that we have some stocks that are available to harvest that are doing well, or they're hatchery fish, and some fish that aren't doing well, and they need to recover. So you have this mix of fish that you need to separate out. And in the fishery, the commercial fishery, there needs to be tools that can separate those fish out and be as be as kind as we possibly can to the ones that need to recover while retaining ones for the marketplace. There is no future for the fish and there is no future for the fishermen unless we come up with a different approaches, different tools and different technology. The trap, I think, is a good start. Some of you would have to show me something better. In my eyes, nothing can outperform as far as working with a fish that goes unharmed. And we need to reward fishermen that are really part of the solution. And certifications can do that. A local recognition can do that. Again, a co-op that could pull these fishermen together and have a market and have a brand on it. So you, if you were buying that fish, you were buying a fish that was caught in a way that was actually helping with recovery. Here we are year two on the Calf Lamet channel, sitting at the pound net, and it has been an incredible year. We've, we've quadrupled our catch, and we've done so with uh, nearly zero mortality. And it's, it's been incredible to see so many fish move through the trap and spilled out in such a vigorous, lively condition. The way that the trap is performing is showing that it is one of the most efficient ways to catch fish and also the most sustainable ways to catch fish. And everyone's catching on. Everybody who comes out, their jaws drop when they see the simplicity of each spill and the size of our catch. Chinook, 900. Yeah. She has previous abrasions. Okay. Big minor. What, what makes this tool much more su sustainable and low impact? Um, it's the very minimal handling that's involved, very low air exposure. There's no entanglement of, of the fish, uh, there's no overcrowding. This is the lowest impact commercial gear that's out there and uh, a way forward for our commercial fishing communities, a way forward for salmon recovery. It's a win-win it's a for the fishermen and the fish and uh, 
will really improve the economies of these coastal fishing communities by enabling the fishermen to fish for longer and fetch a higher price point per pound, all the while uh, recovering wild fish. It's one of the most exciting parts about the gear is this potential for fully selective harvest. And working with local fishermen to set up a co-op is an important next step.